of the woodland. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill. His mind alert. A ready smile. Unswerving. Loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Mr. Jefferson, I'm quitting the ranger service. Sit down, Corey. Let's talk this over. It won't do any good, sir. Call me what you will. Yellow coward, quitter, chicken, I don't care anymore. My bags are packed and I'm going back home. This is my final decision. You just heard the pathetic words from a young ranger, Corey Windsor. Pathetic in the fact that the lad wouldn't let me help him. Corey was not yellow, nor a coward, nor a quitter, nor chicken. He was a frustrated young man who needed direction and help. But let me begin at the beginning. Each year after graduation exercises at ranger school, the class is divided between ranger districts. And the men are sent to their respective areas with orders to report to the chief ranger. It may seem strange that we're so tough on the newcomers, but you'll find out why. This is the morning that I am to meet five new men who have just arrived from school and are waiting for me in the office. Corey, simmer down, will you? It's easy for you to say simmer down, Len. You're always cool, calm, and collected. Also top man of the class. Top man in field honors. Top man on the totem pole. Me? I'm just ordinary. No, cut it out, Corey. For the love of Mike, you wouldn't be here if you weren't a good man. (laughs) Why, look at how many guys washed out of school. Yeah, easy talk for you, Casey. I think you could look a rattler in the mouth and pick your teeth at the same time. Uh Uh-oh, here he comes. Oh, brother, my goose is cooked. Look at that uniform. Look at the build on that guy. Oh, I am looking. Wow, what's he made of? Iron and steel. Get back, he's almost here. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Corey Windsor? Uh, Here, sir. Leonard Kowalski? Here, sir. Fitzgerald Casey? Here, sir. Uh, I prefer to be called Casey, sir. Very well, Casey. We'll do just that. James Papacostas? I'm here, sir. Herman Klein? Here, sir. Very good. Now, gentlemen, grab yourselves a chair and we'll relax while I talk with you a bit. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, let me say that we're more relaxed out here than in school. My men call me Bill. We don't have any of the formality of school, but yet, on the other hand, the discipline will be tougher in other ways. The next six months will scare the heart out of you at times and shrink it a bit at others. Now, there's one extremely important subject you didn't take in school, except occasionally under very carefully controlled conditions. The subject is self-reliance, regardless of the circumstance. I'll repeat that. Self-reliance under any circumstances. Now, Corey, let's create an actual field problem. Yes, sir. A granddad grizzly is on the war path. He's raiding and killing every living thing that gets in his way. He's a wise and battle-scarred old warrior, veteran of many skirmishes with man and beast. To make matters worse, he's nursing an infected tooth. And also an old wound because someone shot him but never finished the job. Or else the bear finished him. Now, this fellow hates man scent and he fears nothing and he's tearing up the countryside. 
How many rangers would I send out to destroy the bear? About a dozen, I'd say, sir. I mean, Bill. No, not more than four, working in pairs of two. Not more than four? Not really. Depending on my immediate supply of rangers, I might send only two. Wow. Double wow. (laughs) That's what I said when I came fresh from school. Now, suppose you were on an outpost station and this same savage and vicious beast tried breaking into your stores and supplies as they sometimes do. Casey, what would you do? Climb the nearest tree? (laughs) He would. (laughs) Well, I I didn't say that to be smart, Bill. I mean it. Of course you do. But in reality, you'd have to kill that beast all by yourself. It's a case of kill or be killed because after he ate or destroyed your stores and supplies, he'd go for you. Now, fellas, in the next six months, you're going to learn self-reliance. How to do the job you have to do without depending on anyone but yourself. Man, that's a large order, isn't it, Bill? Yes, Len, it is. But you can't be a ranger unless you learn this lesson and pass the course. We're going to teach you to think calmly and act intelligently, no matter what problem you face. Well, Casey, what do you think of Bill now that you've met him face to face? Well, I'd say he seems to be a pretty straightforward fellow. I think he'll give us a fair chance. Oh, I don't dispute that. But what about all the stories we've heard? How much he expects from his men? No, you got to discount some of them stories. You know, he's become a legend out here. Okay, but then there's Stumpy Jenkins, Grey Wolf, Henry Scott. You saw Henry in the office. He appears to be a real level-headed and experienced operator, even for a teenager. Corey, are you afraid you're not going to measure up when it counts the most? Yeah, I guess that sums it up pretty well. Ah, oh, hogwash. You'd been washed out back in school, if that were true. Uh-huh. Six months is an awfully long time to wait to find out if you can kill a grizzly all by yourself. Well, look at it from the other side. What other side? Well, the positive side. So? Oh, six months is an awful long time to learn how to kill a grizzly all by yourself. <laughs> Well, now that introductions have been made all around, here's the program for this week. Herman and Jim, you'll work with Grey Wolf for two weeks. Casey, Len, and Corey, you'll work with Stumpy for two weeks. (laughs) You tender feet ready for your initiation? (laughs) Do Do you always take such pleasure in starting us tender feet up the trail of actual experience, Stumpy? (laughs) Yep. A fellow's got to have some amusement once in a while, uh... Now let's get out to the horse barn and get ourselves some mounts and a pack critter and take off for the hills. What are we going to do first? Well, that's a good question, Sonny. Uh, Let me take a peek at my assignment sheet that's filed in my pocket. Uh What is it? No, nothing much. We got to clean out a few rattler dens. Clean out a few rattlesnake dens? Yep. There's a couple of them too near the tourist trails. Pesky reptiles mine up and bite somebody. Nothing to be afeard of, son. This is just routine work. <laughs> There's a den right below us. Oh, man, I'd say it's a den. Look at them, all around it, sunning themselves. Most of them aren't too big, but there's a couple of whoppers. The whoppers we got to get. We don't get any of the rest. Well, this is a fine place to sit and pick them off with a rifle. Pick them off with a rifle? No, sirree. Snakes can't hear, but they're mighty sensitive to vibration. Now, we got to be careful about stomping around, too, or we'll spook them. They'll scoot for the den like so many pack rats. How are you going to capture them? With a snake stick in a gunny bag. That means we got to get in among them. Of course. Ain't never seen a snake stick that could reach from here. I'm going down there and get to work while the sun's making them feel lazy. You fellers stay here and don't stomp around, understand? Yes, sir. You watch sharp now how I do it. Because one of these days you're going to have to do it. 
Boy, my skin's sure trying to crawl off my bones. <sighs> my backbone is turning to jelly double time. I'm never going to be a ranger. I can see that now. Oh, don't start that again. Let's watch this. I want to see how Stumpy keeps from getting himself shot full of vernum. Hey, there's Stumpy. He's almost in the center where they're sunning. Yeah, and there's a big one. Wow! Did you see that? He's flipping them into a pile with a big stick. Look at him work. Uh Uh-huh. He ain't moving from the waist down. Look at the gummy sack. He's swinging it in front of him, and the rattler strike at that and not him. Well, he's got 15 or 20 piled up, and they they can't get away. Uh, Casey! I hear you. Uh, Bring me some gunny bags. Where are them extra heavy gauntlet gloves? And shake a leg. (laughs) Yes, sir. You fellas heard the man. Let's get down there and help him bag up the raptors. You fellas go ahead. I'll watch the horses so they don't run off. Casey, you got it straight now what to do. Yes, sir. Don't move from the waist down and uh, uh, keep my face back from the open end of the sack as you're putting them in. Yep, that's it. Now, don't worry about your hands. Any of them gloves been tested a dozen times. And these varmints can't get through that heavy leather. Stumpy, there's a big one getting away. <laughs> We've been doing too much palavering and not enough work. Now, here they come, Casey. Uh, now, Leonard, you get the next bag ready. Yes, sir. There's the first one. Okay. Uh, Another... I got him. Another one. Oh, yeah. Here's a big one. Okay. Here, here we go. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, that's oh. enough, Casey. Oh. You got plenty of gunny cloth oh. there to tie a knot in the top of the sack. And we'll wire the knot later on. Well, then, here they come. You ready? Would it do any good to say no? <laughs> that's a spirit. All right, here you go. Got it. Quicker. Over right. over a little more. There. There we go. Quick. Here's another. Yeah, I can. Uh, Couple more here. Uh, ah, that's it. Now we're tying it shut, young feller. I gotta take care of this dead one. For Riggy Mortis, that's in. What are you gonna do with the dead one? You blew its head clean off. We're gonna have him for supper. Best eating you ever at. You're gonna eat that, that, that poisonous reptile? Sure, we're gonna eat him. Now get a long pole fixed up while I skin this fatty for his meat. You ought to be a real good taster. <laughs> What'd I tell you? Good taster, ain't he? Yeah, but well, the, the thought of the poison. Uh, what'd you learn in school about how the reptiles are built, huh? Well, the poison sack is in the head. Yep, you remember that. Someday you might be stranded where there ain't no other food. And rattlesnake steak might save your life. You go to some place like Chicago and... See what them stores charge for a wee jar of this stuff. Almost like buying gold. What are we going to do with the snakes we've got in the sacks? Uh, Tote them up to the road and put them in the shade in the morning. When I radio in, I'll tell Bill where they're at and the truck will pick them up and take them to the snake farm where they milk them for making anti-venom syrup. (laughs) They'll probably have a hundred of the pesky reptiles sacked before we're through... uh, Somewhere along the line, you fellas are going to have your chance to get a little first-hand experience. Now let's uh, clean up, take all our utensils down to the creek and scour them with sand. Then we'll set a spell and talk before turning in. What's the matter? He's a little embarrassed because he lost his nerve when I called you fellas down to bag him. How'd you know? <laughs> I wasn't born yesterday or the day before, sonny. And you ain't the first tenderfeet that this has happened to. It isn't? Nope. You ain't the last, neither. Well, I knew a feller one time that wanted to be a doctor the worst way, but every time he saw blood, he fainted away cold. Did he get to be a doctor? He sure did, sonny. 
After a while, he got tired of falling on his head every time he saw blood. He said his mind not to. Today, he's a surgeon. We will find one, too. Thanks, old timer. I'm beginning to see why you fellows have become legends out here. You're strong and tough men, but you're patient and understanding, too. Especially to a weakling like me. Well, there ain't no human being that's perfect, Corey. Nope, not a one. Yeah, you just relax now and get a good night's sleep. You'll need it come tomorrow. Thanks, Stumpy. I'll sleep just fine now. Oh, me too. I'm ready to hit the hay. You said it. Good night. Good night, you tender-feeted rangers. <laughs> well, aren't you going to sleep, old-timer? Yep. Just as soon as I read a little here while the fire's still up. Uh, read what? My New Testament. Oh, that. Good night. Good night, sonny. Hey, Stumpy, what's the matter? Be quiet now. Wake up, Casey and Leonard. Where are we? Did you hear something? Yep. You fellas build that fire up and be quick about it. Sure. What's out there? A grizzly. A real life grizzly? He's alive, all right. We better be, or we might not be. Well, let's get our rifles loaded and ready. No, you don't. Why not? We've got a right to protect ourselves, even if we are green. And shoot each other while you're trying to shoot the bear. You just keep that fire roaring high, and you'll have mighty good protection. In the morning, we'll take a look at the trail signs, and maybe we can tell what that grizzly is doing where there ain't supposed to be one. Why did you come back here to headquarters, old-timer? You should have run that grizzly out of the country or destroyed him. I can't agree with that, Sonny. I got three brand spanking new young rangers with me to look after, too. Now, you got to admit, that's a passel of looking. But what better opportunity could they have had than to get some first-hand experience? All right, Mr. Bill Jefferson. What are you up to with all this foolish talk? What foolish talk? All right, I know you got something tickling your brain cells... But seeing as how I ain't one of them mind-reading fellers, I guess I'll just have to go along until you get ready to let the kitty out of the sack. Stumpy, I think it's time to sort out the men from the boys. You mean one of them tender-feeted rangers ain't a man? That's right. Oh, we all was skitterish when we first started out, weren't we? Uh, which one are you defending, old-timer? Well, don't tell me your well-exercised tongue has suddenly become stricken with rigor mortis. Bill, wouldn't be fair to judge any of them young fellers yet. Uh, they really ain't had a good chance yet. Okay, Stumpy. I won't ask you to violate your loyalty principles. But I want that grizzly out of the area or shot. And I want the job done quickly and expertly. Just me and the three lads... Corey, Casey, and Lynn? There's only one grizzly. Got your gear all packed, boys? Yes, sir. I'm ready to leave whenever you say the word. That goes for me, too, Stoppy. Well, Corey, why ain't your gear packed? We gotta hit the trail now. We wasted too much time already. Uh, that grizzly trail's getting colder by the minute. I. Well, I. Come on, boys, spit it out. I'm not going. Call me a coward or whatever you want, but I'm not going with you to hunt down the grizzly. You sound sort of final, young feller. It is final. I guess Bill was right after all. What do you mean by that? Uh, forget it. We got us a grizzly to spank. We better get after the job pronto. Mr. 
Mr. Jefferson, I'm quitting the ranger service. Sit down, Corey. Let's talk this over. It won't do any good, sir. Call me what you will. Yellow, coward, quitter, chicken. I don't care anymore. My bags are packed and I'm going back home. This is my final decision. There isn't any transportation out of Natty Pine until morning now. Perhaps by that time you'll calm down and think this through and change your mind. I've taken steps to prevent that. You have? Yes, sir. My father's driving here now, and he'll meet me at the hotel in half an hour. Goodbye. Please don't argue with me. I won't. Goodbye, Corey. Thank you, sir. Are you Mr. Bill Jefferson? I am. I'm Corey Windsor's father. Oh, how do you do? Uh, please have a chair. Thank you. Did you find Corey at the hotel all right? He can wait for me. First, I'd like to talk about my son. Sure. Go right ahead. Corey's written to me about how tough you are in your rangers, Mr. Jefferson. And I'd like to know the reason why. You'll have to define the word tough, Mr. Windsor. Tough in the sense of requirements. What they have to learn and do in a short period of time. Then they're put out on their own to sink or swim. Mr. Windsor, we never expect a man to swim until he's been taught how to swim. In the ranger school, the men are under constant observation for the simple reason that we've got to try and detect the men who have been clever enough to get past the original screening process. What are they being screened for? Inability to act under pressure and danger. Cowardice. No fear, Mr. Windsor. Not cowardice. A man wouldn't last a week in ranger school if he were a coward. Well, then what's wrong with Corey? Fear. Fear, fear. What kind of fear? And why? Fear of failure. Fear of failure? That's right. But why? Why? I don't know why. But as his father, you should. Well, I'd better beat Corey at the hotel now, and we'll start home. That's up to you. I'm sorry things turned out this way, Mr. Windsor. But understand one thing. Yes, sir? We must know that a ranger can be depended on to do the right thing at the right time in face of danger and pressure. If he blows up, it can cost the ranger's life and many other lives as well. Not to say anything about property damage. We can show the graduate ranger where the danger is, but we can't make him face it. That he must do himself. Pretty upset about this, aren't you, Father? Yes, Corey, I'd be lying if I said I weren't. But I don't put all the blame on you. You don't? No. Some of the blame belongs to me. Oh, Dad, how can you say that? You've been a good father. By some standards, perhaps. But somewhere along the line, I failed to give you self-confidence. Is that what's wrong with me? Yes, I believe so. How did you come to that conclusion? Well, I had a talk with Bill Jefferson before I picked you up. Oh, so that's why you were late. What did you two talk about? You. <laughs> that figures. Hey, Dad, stop the car. Stop the car, Dad. Great Scott, Corey. That man's crawling alongside the road. He, he's a bloody mess. You stay in the car. What are you going to do with that rifle? Never mind. Just stay in the car. I can't. I've got to help that poor fella. Well, look at him. Stay in the car. There's a mad grizzly loose around here. Grizzly? Get to the house. Family, there. Get to the house. Grizzly, jump me outside. Try to get in the house. Okay, mister. I'm Ranger Coy Windsor. I'll get my dad to take you to the hospital, and I'll go up to the bear. Oh, thank you. Family, and cabin over there. Find your... Dad, get this man to the Naughty Pine Hospital. I'm going after the bear. Alone? Yes, of course. 
There's only one bear. Spooked. Oh, man, there's been fighting. Broken rifle and blood all over the place. Bear tracks. Big one. This is it, boys. Don't tie your horses. Let them loose so they can run. There's a cabin up ahead about half a mile where Sam Brown and his family live. You think Sam and the grizzly tangled here? Yep, I do. We better get into high gear and find out where the grizzly is and what he's thinking up next to do. Look, the grizzly's halfway into the cabin window. Come on, we can't let it get to those kids. Hold it! It's something we haven't got time to argue. Close your jaw bones and take a gander. Casey, it's it's Corey. He's beating the grizzly on the back with his rifle. Shoot him in the rump, boy. That'll make him back out of the window. When he turns around, put one through his fat head. Come on, boy. Hey, come on, Corey. He did it, Stumpy. Watch him, boy. He's turning. Stay away from those paws. Now blast him. Shoot, Corey, shoot. That guy's got ice in his blood. The bear's gonna charge. He's got his big yap open, boy. Empty your rifle right into it. Oh, oh the bear's dead. Corey killed it, you hear? Corey killed the grizzly single-handed. <laughs> Okay, fellers, you can stop shaking now like young Willers in a windstorm. Yeah, it's all over. Corey, you were terrific. Man alive, I'll say. Just a minute, fellas. Let's not heap Corey with what he doesn't deserve. Bill Jefferson, what are you doing to my son? Why, this courageous act of his has given him the self-confidence he needs. It's terrific. Why, today he grew up and became a man. Ah, there you have it, Mr. Windsor. What are you getting at? Just this. Corey did only what he's expected to do and what he's been trained to do. He's more than become a man today. He's become a ranger. I know you're glad that Corey won out over his fear and doubts. Yes? Corey Windsor is now a full-fledged ranger and doing a top-notch job. Well, see you next week for more adventure with Ranger Bill! Ranger Bill was produced in the radio studios of the Moody Bible Institute of Chicago. <laughs> <laughs>